Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, little Hebrews and little Shebrews. How y'all doing out there? All right, all right, all right. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, unfortunately, I can't do the class live today because y'all willing, right now we're doing some immersions. So, I thought I'd put together a little video for you guys with the help of Big Sister Celia. So, Toda EC, big ups, big ups, for uh, putting together this little video. Smile, haha. -ha. So, today we're going to be learning about Groundhog's Day. You guys heard of Groundhog's Day before, right? Punks of Tony Field, all of the Gentiles out there in Pennsylvania somewhere with the little fat groundhog. And if he sees his shadow, that means you're going to have six more weeks of winter. And if he doesn't see his shadow, that means you're going to have an early spring, right? Wrong! Let's open up our Bibles and let's hit it hard and let's hit it fast, little Hebrews. Let's go to the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 10 to be exact verses 1 and verses 2 and let's start this thing off right Jeremiah chapter 10 verses 1 and verses 2 hear the word which Yah speaks to you O house of Israel verse 2 thus saith Yah do not learn the ways of the nations or the Gentiles and do not be awed by the signs of the heavens for the Gentiles are awed by them Hallelujah. Did you little Hebrews know that what most people celebrate today as Groundhog's Day actually started out as something else? Real quick, do you know what it was? <laughs> well, what we now know as Groundhog's Day actually started out as something called Candle Mass. Yes, Candle Mass. So, with that being said, Let's go ahead and get started. Before February 2nd was called Groundhog's Day, it was actually known as Candlemas Day. The ancient festival marks the midpoint of winter, halfway between the shortest day and the spring equinox. In olden times, many people used to say that Christmas season lasted for 40 days until the 2nd of February. Candlemas is a day which holds many different customs and traditions, little Hebrews and Shebrews. Let's start off with those pagan Romans. The Romans had a custom of lighting candles to scare away evil spirits in the wintertime. Wait, ah, time out. Let's take a time out. What does Yah say about evil spirits? Real quick, do you know? Alright, let's go to the book of Psalms, or the book of Telahim in Hebrew. Let's go to the book of Psalms, chapter 91. And we're going to read verses 5 and 6, but you know what? Whenever you're feeling some bad spirits on you, little brothers and sisters, read the whole 91st chapter of the book of Psalms. And I guarantee you, y'all will make those bad things go right away. But for this lesson, we're only going to read verses 5 and 6. So the book of Psalms, chapter 91 verses 5 and 6 it says right here you are not afraid of the dread by night or of the arrow that flies by day of the pestilence that walks in the darkness or of the destruction that ravages at midday so you see we're not scared of the dark so we don't need any candles Yahoshua the Messiah is our light and he's given us that light and that light is the truth that light is the word of Yah and that light trumps any candle but getting back to this whole this whole pagan thing here in its earliest incarnation groundhog's day was called embolic i m b o l c embolic a pagan celebration associated with weather divination whoa whoa weather divination what does that mean moshe well that means using weird and matters other than what Yah has given us to understand using what the fallen angels or what the wicked angels gave mankind instead of what Yah gave mankind now don't get me wrong little Hebrews it's not wrong to be aware of the change in seasons as a matter of fact in the book of Genesis chapter 1 verses 14 please turn your Bibles there cuz let's read this because most people will get confused Let's read this right here and let's see what Yah has to say about this. Genesis chapter 1 verses 14. 
And Yah said, Let lights come to be in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and appointed times and for days and years. So you see, Yah gave us the stars at night, and Yah gave us different things to see so we know when winter changes to spring, and when spring changes to summer, and so on and so forth. As a matter of fact, one of our wisest and richest kings, check this out, the book of 1 Kings, chapter 4, verses 30. 1 Kings, chapter 4, verses 30. We're going to read about wise King Solomon here. And Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the men in the east and all the wisdom of Egypt. So King Solomon, he was a wise man. And all he did was pray to Yah and ask that Yah give him understanding on how to be a righteous king and a righteous leader. And Yah blessed him more than all of those wise and wicked kings of Egypt and of Babylon and all of those other places. You see, and all he had to do was ask. Yeah. He didn't have a fat groundhog named Punxsutawney Phil, and he didn't let the groundhog walk out there and judging by the groundhog's shadow and everything. King Solomon didn't do that. No, so we don't have to do that, little Hebrews. And so don't be tricked into celebrating these things when people tell you that, oh, it's just a simple holiday. Oh, it's just, it's just fun and games. No, 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 no. It's not fun and games because we're seeing right here that this originated from pagan customs and traditions and divination and wicked things and witchcraft. And we don't want to do that stuff because we don't want to make Yah upset. The word embolic or embolic is Gaelic. And Gaelic, little Hebrews and little Shebrews, is the language of the ancient Celts. There is a strong association between Embalk and Brigid or Brigid. Brigid is spelled B R I G I D. Brigid. That's a Celtic fertility goddess. So we see we have goddess worship going on in here, little brothers and little sisters. Let's continue going. When the pagan holidays were transformed into the Catholic equivalents, so you see, the pagan holidays will transform into Catholic holidays, and the Catholic holidays is where you get all of Christianity. Uh-oh. Aha. Now we're seeing things starting to heat up here. Two new holidays emerged from Embalk. One, St. Brigid's Day, a.k.a. St. Bridget's Day, was celebrated on February 1st. St. Bridget's Day honored an Irish saint named after the Celtic goddess who was a contemporary of St. Patrick. All of these saints and goddesses, this don't have nothing to do with the Bible. Hmm. Interesting. The second holiday deriving from Embalk was Candlemas Day. Ah, and here we go. One plus one equals wicked. Candlemas Day and was celebrated on February 2nd what we now know as Groundhog's Day. Candlemas was the feast of Mary's purification. Uh-oh. That's not talking about Miriam in the Bible. That's talking about Diana, the, the goddess and the queen of heaven. Saint Mary. That's who this is talking about. Ooh. So this Candlemas was a feast of Mary's purification and was marked by a candle procession which means a whole bunch of weirdos was walking around with candles in the dark and singing praises to the Virgin Mary. That's what procession means. <laughs> it just means a long line of people. Now, the ties between purification rituals and the month of February also go back to the pagan era. Indeed, the very word February, little brothers and sisters, which derives from the Latin, unmistakably designates the month as a time for purification for the pagans. Februa means expi expiratory off offerings. The Lupercania, a pagan Roman purification, also took place in February. Now again, little Hebrews and little Shebrews, does that mean that we can't say the word February? No, because we're not giving honor and esteem to these things, you know? So we're we we say it, but we're not saying it how the pagans say it. We don't. We're not giving worship to it. Just like when we use the words Lord God and Jesus, we're not giving praises to those names. 
We're saying them so people can understand. That's all. But how did Groundhog's Day become a symbol for a holiday that was marked by a candle procession? How did we get Punks of Tony Phil from candles and all of this stuff, right? Well, the Romans, for instance, they had a holiday similar to this. They celebrated a rough equivalent to Groundhog's Day in early February, only they had a hedgehog, not a groundhog, and he was in charge of weather divination. You know what? Doggone it, Moshe, you keep saying this word, divination. What does that word mean? Well, let's go to the Bible and let's see. Because the Bible, that's our history book, little Hebrews and little Shebrews. And whenever we have questions, the Bible has answers. So let's go to the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 10. And let's see what we got here. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 10. Let's see what it talks, talks about divination here. It says, let no one be found among you who makes his son or daughter pass through the fire or one who practices divination oh. or a user of magic or one who interprets omens or a sorcerer or somebody who puts a groundhog on the ground and tell you and going to try to tell you if it's going to be six more weeks of good weather or six weeks of bad that's what that's saying, little brothers and sisters. Ho, oh, ho, 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 ho. So now I understand what divination is, Moshe. So when these crazy cats are out trying to read palms, and when these crazy cats are out there uh, seeing if uh, groundhogs is going to determine the weather, that's divination. That's sorcery. And there's nothing innocent, and there's nothing simple about it. Hmm. Get this. And such beliefs, little brothers and sisters, were then Christianized. Wow. So from the Roman times, the Roman Emperor Constantine, he took all of these pagan customs and traditions and he brought them into Christianity. This is why the Romans have St. Mary and this is why they have St. Patrick and all of these different saints and things. Because they took different pagan holidays and they attached those people who were associated with those holidays, the gods, the goddesses, and the saints, and all of those people, and they made them their saints. Wow. So these beliefs were Christianized and attached themselves to Candlemas Day as folklore. European settlers in North America kept the tradition alive. Uh-oh, and this is how we get it to this day. So the Europeans brought it over here. The Quakers and the... Uh, and the and the pilgrims and all of those people they brought these pagan holidays over here because they brought christianity over here so the european settlers little brothers and sisters in north america kept the pagan tradition alive but substituted the native groundhog for the european hedgehog today in north america almost everyone in the general public has heard of groundhog's day while the mention of candlemas day would generally they would draw a blank with that so wow, little brothers and sisters, we learned an awful lot in this short little lesson. And again, I'm so, so, so sorry that I wasn't here to be with you guys to see the all, all the little expressions and to do my little song. I'm at home right now, so I don't have the keyboard with me. I can't do a song today, but y'all willing, y'all willing, y'all willing, y'all willing. Next Shabbat, I can come back and I can do a song live for you guys. So with that being said, little Hebrews and little Shebrews, we're going to open it up for question and answers. That's the end of the lesson. May y'all bless. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.